Here's an old game of an airplane shooting a cat. And I'm not sure why I'm shooting a cat, but uh, up here you have the cat's health. And uh, this game allows you to shoot multiple bullets that can all interact with the cat. And when he gets down to no health left, he lays over on his side and has red eyes and has a big X. And so I'm revisiting this one because I have a couple of good questions. and I, I like good questions. They make me think. So the first one is, what if I want all my shots to be a different color? So the first thing I tried that didn't work was uh, I went down here to where I created the shots. Whenever the space bar is pressed, shoot, basically. And I tried to add a tent block, which I don't really understand why it doesn't work, but I couldn't get that to do anything. So why am I doing it now? I don't know. Um, and I was going to randomize that. But just to see if it was working, I was going to make it red. And you can see those are clearly not red, so that's not working. Okay, so then the next idea I had, uh, I went and looked at my shot animation, and it's just a gray box. And I thought, well, I could make like 10 of these and make them all different colors. And then I could just change the name of the animation every time. But that kind of sounded hard, too. So then my third idea was inside this animation, I can just uh, make more frames. So I'm just going to duplicate this. And you would want to do it as many times as, as there were colors you wanted to use. But for the sake of this example, I'm just going to stop at four. And I'm going to pick four colors that are easy to see. So we'll know that it's working. OK. So it's still just called shot, and these are inside of it. And then when I shoot, you get this effect, which is a little hard to see in the video. So what I'm going to do is just make the bullet a lot bigger, just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to grab a dot .scale. And I'll triple its size. I'll give it a 3. And now you can see when I shoot, it's easier to see what's going on. right? You'll notice that it's happening for all the bullets. And they're all following the exact same pattern. But I don't think that's what the commenter actually wanted. I think they wanted each bullet to be a different color. So what I've tried next is to come down and play with these, these frame. Uh, all these blocks right here refer to which frame inside of here. And I've never seen any of the code.org lessons actually talk about how to do that. So the first thing I want to do is pause them so they're not cycling through. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is uh, hit a next frame. That way every time the space bar is pressed, it's going to go through to the next frame. First one's black, next one's pink, next one's red, next one's pink. I don't know why that happened. Black, red pink, red, green. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going on right there, but I did hit all four colors. Uh, maybe you guys can figure something out, but that's close. Uh, then the next thing was, um, how do you add a score so that when you shoot something, the score goes up? I think we've done that before, but it's kind of fun. So uh, what I've done here is added a variable called score on line one and set it to zero. And uh, then down here, whenever the bullet or the shot is touching my cat, where's my is touching? Here we go. Whenever the cat is touching a shot, we want to first move the cat and then add the score by one. It's important to move it first or your score will go up by way more than one at a time. And then to see that in action, um, we'll reset. And down here, I typed score. And you can tell it started on zero, and so now when I hit him, uh, the score goes up. Looks like I hit him several times at once there. That was bad luck. Okay, so the score went up one. Score went up two, so that's working. Now the only other thing you're probably wanting is the score to appear somewhere on the screen. And to do that, you need to find your draw sprites and... Well, 
right here will be fine. We're going to draw uh, some text on the screen. And you can do this above or below. It really depends on if you want the score to be on top of the elements or below them. I typically put it below because I normally have a background as a sprite, uh, but that's not really an important detail. So what you want to do is we'll just start off by writing score. And I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, I'm going to make the R capitalized just to show you what I'm up to. Okay. You see how it's very small and it's in the corner? That's its default location. So the first thing I would do would be to make it the size you want it. Uh, you want to put the text size above that. Let's just try 30. Okay, that's a good size. And then you want to move it around. And this is its X position and Y position. I just put my mouse kind of where I want it to be. And then look at these numbers right here. So it looks like 300, 350, maybe. Okay, and then um, if you want the actual score to be to the right of it, then I need to scoot this guy over. But if you wanted the score below it, this would be fine. Um, I'll put it below it. So I'm going to copy this guy, paste it, and now this time, you want to backspace all this out and make sure you backspace out the quotes, because this time, we want score and lowercase, and the reason we want it written exactly like this is because that's the way we named the variable. So this time it's not going to put the word score on the screen. That's why I made the R big to make it easier to differentiate between the two. Go ahead and fix that now. Okay, so right now it should write the score right on top of that, which is a problem. So we need to scoot it over a little bit and scoot it down a little bit. Need to scoot it down more. And I'd kind of like it to be centered there. That's going to have to be close enough. All right, so now when we shoot, it's going to update for us. So that's how you would do that one. And then the only other comment that's worth mentioning is someone said, well, what if you have multiple enemies? Well, we can do that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is take this brown cat and duplicate him a couple of times. Now, all your enemies could look exactly the same, but just so we can uh, differentiate between them. Let's have a red-eyed cat. That's black. Okay, let's have a black-eyed cat. And let's have a red-eyed cat. So up here where we create our enemy, he was created with just uh, these three. So I'll just copy that and paste it, and I'm just going to call these all cat2. Now I'm going to paste it again, say cat3. Okay. Uh, let's just see what happens. Did you notice nothing happened? We're drawing all three cats in the exact same location. So what you want to do, uh, we'll just decide where you want them. So maybe we want one up here at 30, 70. And you may want it to be random. And maybe we want one over here at 340, 182. Ta-da, you got multiple enemies. Now watch this. This one's going to work just like you expect. Score went up. Uh, this one, nothing happens. And this one, nothing happens. And that's because we haven't coded either one of those things. So you got to come all the way down here to the is touching cat business. Right here. If cat is touching shot eye. you got to take this whole thing. Copy it, paste it, and everywhere you see cat, change it to cat2. 
So the cat 2 touches the shot. Cat 2 gets a new location. If you want them all to share a health bar, you can make your own health bar, and you want the score to go up for each one. The health bar doesn't really make sense in this situation. But we're going to play along anyway. And now we'll do the same thing again for cat 3, just copying and pasting the is touching functionality. And that's the only thing that has to do with the cat itself. So now it's run. That one worked. That one worked. This one's going to be double points because I'm going to hit two cats with this one shot. Another thing you could do is once you ran into something, you could make the bullet uh, respawn somewhere else and stop moving. And that would take away the possibility of having two shots. Anyway, you get the idea. Hope that helps. If, if someone else figures out how to make the color cycle um, the way we would have expected to cycle in order through these, um, let me know. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to uh, change the animation for Cat 2 and 3. I don't actually think it matters, but since I made them, I'm going to do it anyway. That cat. Okay. There we go. So we can clearly tell which one's which. Okay. 